Hello and welcome to Zen AF Podcast. We are going to wish you a very happy 2022. We hope all your dreams come true. It is the new year. Uh, Also, we have a new website, new URL. It is zenafpod.com, no longer zenaf.tv. It was fun while it lasted, but that is no longer. So zenafpod.com. Uh, you can join our newsletter there. You can uh, go subscribe at, uh, you know, all the podcast places of the worlds. Hi, Wayne. Hi. We got a new tagline, too. <laughs> yeah, we have a new tagline. Uh, Wayne. I kind of want to I, I wanna break it down before we say it. We're going to try to say it sequentially together. But I want to I want it because what had happened is this morning um, we both woke up and we've been starting this new thing. Um, because I don't find it, I find it creepy to ask you how you slept. You know, like I always <laughs> ask, I always ask my, you know, the girl I'm dating, I always say, Hey, how was your sleep last night? When I text her in the morning mm-hmm. and I ask you, I just don't, it's, it's, it's not, it doesn't work. But we, we, we say these things in the morning now. <laughs> like, I think I called you wolf tears this morning. That's right. I called you Dale Rammer. It's because my, because my, because <laughs> my, because my junk, I named my junk Dale, the high school swimmer. Um, not because of, that's so creepy it's because he, it's cause he's tall and skinny and veiny it's and just like fucking really, creepy. It's I creepy. <laughs> okay. Yes. So what is that? That's Arnie made me. Finkelstein. That's the sign I made you when you got off the plane and, I know. and oh, I'm going to frame it in six to nine months. Okay. <laughs> the everlasting procrastinator. So, okay. So what's our, what's our new tagline? So, yeah. So this morning we were, we were having our morning chat like we do every morning. And it was brought to my attention that you and I are pretty much twinsing now. And mm-hmm. you, and, and I don't remember what was said exactly, but I said we were going to blow people's minds today. And then you, and I was thinking it, and then you returned with what, sorry? With our mouths. With our mouths. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Zenea podcast, where we blow people's minds. With our mouths. <laughs> which is just, which is just kind of, it's raunchy and yet true. I mean, and there's, like... if you get the sexual, uh, you know, innuendo out of there. It's true. We use our mouths with our, you know, with the tongue and the lips, the teeth, tip of the tongue, the lips, the teeth, and we blow your mind. The the teeth, and we blow your mother bleeping minds, and that (laughs) that is amazing. Yeah, we're kind of like Nike. Just do it. Just do it. But we are Zen AF Podcast, blowing your minds with our mouths. (laughs) So here's 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 something wild. Uh, What is the show about today? We don't know. Yep. No idea. <laughs> well, it's 2022 now. So, okay. yeah. So, um, I just want to, you know, say thank you again to all our listeners and stuff. We're heading into a new year. And uh, this is episode 21, which is pretty wild. And so, everyone just, you know, do what you're going to do. Uh, I hope you I hope you have great uh, intentions and with, you know, with an open, loving heart. And uh, treat people the way you want to be treated. Most of the time with your ego. Yeah. If they need to be, if people need to be sorted out, sort them out, but don't go out of your way to push. You see the last two years we've been running with our opinions, everybody, all of my, and I love them, but we all have friends that aren't as smart as everybody else. We have dumb friends. I'm sorry. And, and, Mm -hmm. and, you know, if you're listening to this and you're one of my friends and you're going, wait, am I one of the dumb friends? Chances are. Yeah. You are, but that's okay. I'm, I'm one of the, the dumb friends, but I was just going to say that. What if we're the dumb friends? We are probably the dumb friends. However, um, all of my dumb friends are now experts in epidemiology and politics. So just, just no, this year, this year, just don't, just don't use, just don't, don't just get on with it. (laughs) 
<laughs> That's if I could give you any advice, it would be don't. And I will say this. I, I have New Year's resolutions now. I realize that I, I didn't like them before because I never followed through with any of them. But I have a couple New Year's resolutions that I started early. So I'm into it. Yeah. So you just did something pretty big. I mean, if you, you know, if you want to talk about it. So what did you do? Um, I, I learned how to um, pleasure myself without pornography. Awkward silence. I, listen, I, no, that's not what I was talking about. God. Oh, oh. No. I do want to talk about that at some point. I'm going to write that down because my ADHD mind porn. No, pleasure. Jesus Christ. With oh porn. Pornography, yeah, porn. And then star imagination. I O N I O. Yeah, it's an I O N on the end of that word. Uh, we okay. We were doing our tagline. We were doing our tagline this morning. We spent literally five minutes on grammar. We were like, "Is it? Is it? Is it peoples with an apostrophe s? Yeah. Is it an apostrophe after? Is it no? Is it just a peoples? Well, so the so the apostrophe s is shows ownership. So that's why if we're saying uh, blowing listeners' minds. Uh, with our mouths, then that would be listeners. They own their minds. So I think that's it. I mean, again, I I failed a lot, so I don't We're know. We're open to it. We're not making t-shirts today for it. I mean, no. however, we are making t-shirts. Tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon. So here's something interesting. I am heading back to Los Angeles. Uh, I am... <gasps> I've been here in Austin for three and a half months, and I'm uh, kind of sad that I'm going back, but we are leaving on Monday morning. I, I We were supposed to leave Sunday, but the, uh, you know, I have a, the, the Dolphins play the Titans. Not a big deal. Not going to get into it. But so Monday, we're leaving Monday morning. We're driving back to L.A., and uh, we are going to be back in L.A., I guess, Tuesday night. So we'll be back in the Los Angeles area for God knows how so, long. Well, only for a couple weeks. Because what? you have you have to go on another little trip at the middle of January, don't we? Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I, I, if you're just hearing this for the first time, my wife blew my mind. Not with not her with mind. her mouth. Well, but sometimes. So here's the thing: she got me. Oh my god! Like I'm still like in shock about this. She got me for my birthday a ticket, two tickets. To see David Lee Roth at Mandalay Bay at the their concert venue there, which is uh, House of Blues. I am freaking out because this is his retirement. Like, he's retiring, and this is one of his last shows, if not the. I think he added two more, though, because ticket sales. But I this is, and I'm on the floor, and I'm right there, going to be right there. Probably ball height, I think. Hopefully ball height. And I want to get all the sweat from him, and I want to collect all the... the all my tears and his sweat, mix it together, make some kind of potion. Lube. Make a lube out of it. Oh, 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 I'm going to make a lube out of David Lee Ross' sweat and my tears. out of his sweat and tears, and you can call it. Okay, we'll come back to that. Yeah. This is... I'm going to write this down. Now, David here's the thing. David Lee Roth. <laughs> I am actually writing this down. Sweat. And tears. Oh, so here's nice. something interesting. He already has a lube out. And I'm not even kidding. It's called uh, uh, Ink the Original, but it's for tattoos to keep them shiny. And it's not, but I use it as lube. So it's for tattoos, but I use it as lube. Let's not talk about that. So here's the funny thing. It's in Vegas. Now, I was talking to someone on Instagram who's a Van Halen, huge Van Halen fan. And they said they have tickets to the 7th and 8th of January shows. But they might uh, postpone this stuff because of covid so i don't know what the fuck's gonna happen no nah, i think we're gonna be good i think we're gonna be good we're not gonna go there um oh. now that we're done talking about you which is all we ever do because that's true oh, Alex, Scooby. <laughs> what are we gonna talk jazz hands there Scooby. listen well, i tried to get I you to gonna, talk earlier and you you know you passed i off. am gonna talk about that now okay all right so go for it it's hard to tell you because but you this this time is different but it's hard to tell you because you call me out every time. I, uh, I've officially given up cannabis. Again, so this is great, but what did you do? See, I before what I would do, so backstory, ladies and gentlemen, is I have a prescription from the, the, 
from vet veterans because I'm a I'm a veteran. I have a prescription for 90 grams a month of cannabis that I've been using quite liberally for the last five and a half years. And mm -hmm. every for the last year, I've wanted to give it up because I know that it's kind of screwing with my mindset and it's creating a lot of lethargicism and it's taking me out of a place that I need to be. And I've been back and forth with you saying, okay, I'm going to, you know, give it up or take a break. And I would take a break for a week. I would take a break for a couple of days, but then I would be right back onto it, sending you videos of me with a Russian accent melted out of my mind, <laughs> you know, and, and I have officially given it up. I am canceling my prescription with the government today after this podcast. Wow. I am, I have, wow. I have disposed of about four thousand five hundred dollars worth of cannabis it is all gone please tell me you sold it please tell me you no sold it. you can't no my god no um in giving up cannabis i'm also not wanting to go to prison oh you can go to prison for that but yeah it's called drug trap it's a prescription man so it's i gotta stop selling my xanax off yeah don't sell xanax Fuck. and don't i didn't even know that no no, yeah, no, I didn't. No, I didn't sell it. I didn't give it away. I got like I, I, I don't even want to talk about how I got rid of it. I put it in a big. I emptied it all into a big pail, and I and I filled it up with water, and then I. Wow. And, and then it's gone. It's gone. Wow, that's a well. Look, I'm gonna do this because Thanks. that's huge, man. Seriously, five, five years is enough, man. Five years is enough. Yeah. 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 So you were when... so you were feeling lethargic. You said you were telling me the other day that you were feeling kind of lethargic and not not kind of you weren't as um, organized and you just wanted to get back to that, right? I mean that's yeah. It 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 was. I get it. I love it. Listen, I love being stoned. I think being stoned is wonderful. I mm -hmm. I had a blast. However, it was doing me no justice anymore. There was a time in my life where I was using it for a purpose, and then there was a time in my life where I was using it for fun. And now I don't have a purpose or need that fun, you know, so I'm, I'm yeah. done. I'm happy and I'm moving on to bigger, better things. That's so, so great, man. That's yeah. so, that's, that's really great. And you know, again, for people that are listening, it's like, again, we've talked about this before. If you, if you're using stuff in moderation, uh, you know, that, that's your own deal. I, I don't judge anyone for that because we all have our vices and we all have our stuff, you know, it's so but if something makes you feel better to stop using something, whatever it is, then have at it and good luck. And that's that's phenomenal, dude. Well, Seriously. you know what, too, with the whole vulnerability thing, um, like being on Zoloft and it's screwing with my sexual function, like I just cannot come to fruition. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh. Without like. Uh, a world of <sighs> effort like hours and hours of effort which Ugh. um is fun once exhausting. but it's not fun after that it's exhausting so it's supposed to pass that side effect is supposed to pass with the zoloft around the four or five month mark and that's where i'm at right now and it hasn't so i'm really wondering because i was if like if if i was getting into it i would probably be stoned because it was nighttime or whatever and it i it just so I'm wondering if that was holding me back. There's a whole bunch of shit that and um, I was turning to like Snoop Dogg and Cheech and Chong going, well, they've been doing it forever and they're doing just fine. So I should. And that's when I was like, maybe. Mm, uh. Nope. <laughs> ah! Look, so we were talking about justification, right? So we all justify like, you know, all my friends pretty much all my friends and people I know are addicts of some sort, um, whether it's boozing or smoking weed or, you know, shopping or, you know, whatever the fuck it is. Cause there's so many, there's such a wide range of addictions. Right. And it's funny when people, and it's, I, I've done it, I do it. So it's like, okay, I'm not going to do this anymore, but I'm going to try this over here to kind of, you know, so we so we kind of move our shit around like like checkers on a board. Like we're like, well, we'll take take hey, this one back, but I'm going to move this one forward. And it's I guess that's just the norm. I guess that's what people do. Right. I mean, if you quit smoking, you eat Snickers bars by the dozens or whatever your favorite candy bar is. Same thing goes with booze. If you if you stop drinking booze, you sometimes uh, substitute sugar 
It's like it's always sugar for some reason at night. So it's like it's just kind of wild. I don't know. I don't know. I yeah, just went off uh, on a tangent. It's, it's, it's kind of like I have to. Yeah, I don't move on to. I hope it's not Snicker bars because that's that's a whole. I'm not a big <laughs> Snickers fan. But like I. I don't because I do enjoy a drink, but I don't get drunk. I'm not somebody and I, I've been like that for years. So that won't be a thing. I'm not going to I even gave up CBD like I've I've gotten rid of everything. Anything to do with cannabis is gone. I still think it's wonderful. I'm not telling anybody in this that, that listens to us. Oh, I, now that I, you know how you when you mm-hmm. quit smoking, you turn into a mm-hmm. douchebag about uh-huh. smoke. oh, all the smokers are gross. But, yeah. you know, like, I'm not doing that. I, I believe in it 100%. However, I don't have the ability to do it in moderation. I really, really don't. Like, it it, it, it was all – I would – oh, I would at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock on my days off, I would smoke a joint, mm-hmm. followed by another joint, followed by another joint, followed by six, seven videos to you, followed by another joint, followed by five wow. videos. That's yeah, See, that's it. amazing. So it's like, you know, I've never uh, smoked pot like that. I've always been – I'm going to take a hit. I'm going to see what it does. And then maybe a little later I'll go, oh, okay, I'll take another hit. But I never could do the the, the mass amounts because I, I don't know why. I just never did. But now, on the other hand, booze, I have been known to throw them back and, and not remember certain things the next day. But the good thing about this story is I haven't been drinking as much as I had in the past. And I feel better about that. Right. So like the nights I do have cocktails, I'll have like four beers instead of 11. Right. I, I'll do like a sipper of tequila instead of eight shots. So I don't know. It's playing out with me. My biggest issue is my smoking cigarettes. Now, again, when people tell me I should quit, when they say that to me, do you know what I want to do to them? Yeah, throw punch. I want to fucking drown them and then and then dismember their bodies. So, I know, (laughs) but I know that that is my main addiction is cigarettes. That is my 100% addiction. And, uh, and I know it. So at some point, I don't know when, but at some point, because I have, it's in my brain now, I'm going to release them. And I, uh, I'll say three things about that one I smoked for 16 years. Okay. And uh, and and like a pack a day smoker, and I haven't smoked since I quit uh, November eleventh, two thousand eleven, um, on Remembrance Day, so Veterans Day for Americans, yeah. Remembrance Day for Canadians. I had my last drag of a cigarette. It was from uh, somebody I was in the military with. She had lit a cigarette at the bar we were all at. I took a drag, never touched it again. Wow. Knowing, knowing, ten years later, almost you know over ten years later, that if I was to put a cigarette in my mouth, I'd probably go buy a pack. It is. I it, it blows my it, yeah. it blows my mind mm-hmm. that there is, like I feel like smoking is one of the hardest addictions to quit. You know because it's so accessible and it's so. But but where I'm going with that is also, you know, you can't tell somebody else to do anything, man. Like no. your process is your process. Mm-hmm. And when I say that, if you were, I'm probably gonna smoke a joint again. Yeah, you know, but I'm not going to be hard on myself when I do. Yeah, I've noticed that about you. Like, dude, you look fantastic because you've been working out more, oh, thank you've been you. eating better, you've been thank drinking you. less. Yeah, you know, and and it you feel wonderful. Yeah, and that's kind of the motivation to to stay on that path. I have almost um, the same kind of like uh, cravings that I had when I smoked with marijuana, but it's just not as intense. Like, what do you mean, like foods? Or do you mean, like, uh, game? What do you mean, like, games no, or I mean music? Like or... At three, no, I mean, like, at 3 p.m. every day still, I'm like, I get a little bit anxious, like, I want to smoke a joint. Oh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, in between a cigarette. But but it's, it's it's yeah, I, I think you just give yourself a little bit of grace, do the best that you can, and you'll quit things when you're ready. Like, yeah, but I've don't you? Th- bus up. Yeah. No, no, I totally agree with what you, everything you're saying. Because it's like, but don't you think that like addiction right so it's like okay so specifically with cigarettes i've heard you know i've there's been times where i quit for like two weeks or like you know five days or whatever and it's nothing to you know write home to mom about oh by the way today would have been my mom's 73rd birthday happy birthday mom uh happy birthday yeah yeah so so anyway so uh what was i oh my point was 
cigarettes, right? So what you just said about you quit for 10 years, you have one, you go buy another pack, right? So it, that's how it says. My brother quit smoking for years and years and years. Next thing I know, he's like, well, I had a cigarette and now I'm smoking again. It's like, it's so, I don't, it, well, I guess uh, Philip Morris really knows how to do it. You know, that cigarette company really knows. I wonder if they have any money. Mm. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah, it's a, yeah, I don't even want to, I have, I, you know, I have tons of buddies that smoke. Less people are smoking now. In yeah. Canada, cannabis has always been like, it, it's always been a pretty big thing. You know, a lot of people, it's always been very accessible. We're very proud of our pot. <laughs> okay. enough, enough about addictions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus, yeah, yeah, yeah. Down. I have a little Why something that people love. It's time for one word answer, ladies and gentlemen. Nope, nope. It's time for it's one time, word nope. answer. Nope, it's time for one word answer the other way because there <sighs> was a... Yeah, People love I'm that game, by the way. Yeah, I know, and we're playing one word answer, but we're playing it with me, an actual... Okay, um, give it to me. Um, this is exciting. Well, I, the problem is, is I lost it. Son of a... Well, man. I can give a quick one to you, and then you can come back at me. Oh, man, this is going to be so good. Well, you find that. Just give me one word for this. Here's the article. Man kills himself and then runs away. <laughs> That's an article. <laughs> Man kills himself and runs away. Problems. That's, you won. You always win this You're game. Welcome. I know, I'm good at it. What's I my game? Even, Give me I a game. I can't find it. Oh, man. This so Canada. Um, here's something in the news. Um, okay. They're they're sending in Quebec, the French province. They're sending. Um, we have no choice. Quebec announces some health workers with COVID nineteen will be allowed to work. What? Yeah, because so many people, everybody's getting it now. So I think they're running out of people to work because they all have it. So they're just like, eh, fuck it, just just show up. Oh my god. Well, so now it's just going to become like uh, fucking uh, every, everyone w is going to get it because then they're going to anyway, right? So whether you're vaccinated or not, you're going to get Omicron. And it's going to be like, you know, Omicron. Omicron. So uh, here's something interesting. Uh, this morning in my Google News Feed, this article pops up. WHO, the World Health Organization, uh, says that there will be other variants that will uh, basically not... Our, our vaccinations won't work. And I'm like, what? I mean, just Can we just stop now? Can we just be done, please? Well, because you be can't done. be vaccinated for a cold, I don't think. Yeah, well, hopefully, right? I mean, hopefully you that's what, what it mean? is. Yeah. Like, this thing this thing's going to everybody and their everybody and their dogs got it. And, yeah. And, and, and dogs, the who, the who said that dogs don't have to quarantine anymore. So really? But, who let the dogs in? Who let the... Oh, I see what you did there. Oh, my God. That's not my oh joke. My I got that from somewhere else. You stole that? that? Yeah, I stole the shit out of that. Yeah. Yeah. So my That's wife's good. sister uh, had, uh, you know, Omicron. Omicron, so whatever you want to call so it. She's, they took her she had time. a cold. She said she felt like she had a cold. That's what she said. Oh, yeah. There's people with it that just have a sore throat now. Like, I don't think it's I, – I really feel like it's on its way out. And I know we're not big covid -y chatter people, but yeah. I do feel like this is the end of the end of it. And and I know there are people that are all like, no, it'll never go away. We're all going to – like, the next – what do they do the next the next, um, the next next variant? Do they – is it – if there's another wave, is it going to – is it just going to be like a mass – are we going to have a purge? Instead of lockdowns, we're going to do a purge or something? Oh. Oh, like I love that movie. Gets, I've never seen it. You got to see the first one. It's crazy. No. no, I just don't understand how, like, to completely go off that topic. But how do you, as a film writer, like, people are thinking of this shit. Well, yeah. And, like, I mean, nobody's asking any questions. They're like, no, 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 no. No, he's fine. Or she's fine. That 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 <laughs> screenwriter is fine. No, 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 no. That's just what they Wait, like to write about. Can you tell that well, Wayne, my partner, is not uh, my podcast partner, is not a uh, he's not a fan of the horror slash, uh, you know, kind of slasher kind of 
uh, mental movies. I, on the other hand, am, and I, I thought the first Purge was was done really well, and it was creepy. And and you're right, you're absolutely right. There are people out there that think of this stuff and and go to lengths to write it and get it perfect and gory and grisly and fucked up. And then and then there's studios that buy them for you know millions and make them. Do you know what I mean? So it's yeah, like but there's nothing wrong. No, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with that at all. <laughs> you know what the worst thing is? My my almost ten year old daughter loves that shit. Like oh. loves that shit. See, that's why she, I love her. Now I even love her more. Oh my god, she was three years old watching Scooby Doo, which to a three year old with ghosts yeah. and goblins and monsters has got to be something. Oh, she oh, yeah. loves it. The Titanic. Not that it's a scary movie, but she'll yeah. look at me and she'll be like, Dad, I. Why? Why did he let go? Yeah, <laughs> I know. Well, that's been the that's been the thing for a while now with that movie. Here's something wild that I did. Now I now I don't. I'm not. Look. So when my son and I maybe I brought this up on one of these episodes, but when my son because I'm such a huge horror fan, when my son was about three or four, somewhere in that age range, maybe even five, I sat him down on the couch and I for some reason put on Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original. And we watched it. Oh, you talked to me. Yeah, I think I did. So I think that's, I think, I don't know if that's right or wrong. And I'm not going to judge myself. That's wrong. You should. We shouldn't judge people, Wayne. This is a zen as uh, fuck podcast, right? So you we're zen. Judge this just, somebody wasn't happy with the name of our podcast. They called us a, a word that I can't remember. <laughs> I saw that. Remember we got to get, yeah. yeah, such a contradiction, zen af. Like, yeah, who was that? I can't, well, I don't remember her name, but it was a female. I do know that. So we have one female enemy now. I she, thanked her. her I, well, that's that's Zen to do. That's Zen as fuck, actually, to do. I would like to go back to my notes here for a <laughs> okay. second. Okay. I would like to talk about milk. We had a big day in our house today. We had a big day Bring in our it. house today, and that's why I want to talk about milk. Okay. I'm not a, I'm not, I'm not all about the organic stuff, people. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm a barbecue sauce on my French fries from McDonald's type of guy. Mm -hmm, the, the nugget mm -hmm. dipping sauce mm -hmm. is really good. In fact, I think I'm gonna have McDonald's today. Now that I think about it. No, dude, I just had an apple and egg whites. Stop it with the McDonald's. Why does why, why does me getting McDonald's affect you? Because Alex? you know what it does, Wayne. You know what you does fucking it do, know what Alex? it does. It, what does it do? It I'm makes me go to McDonald's. My daughter and I are going to have McDonald's in a completely different country than you. We're not. You even just had country. McDonald's the other day. You just sent me a picture of you and your daughter eating McDonald's the other that day. That wasn't my daughter. That was my girlfriend. Fine. That that's Freudian. But listen, you just sent me a picture and you had massive amounts of burgers and and I had one burger with fry like well to me it looked like massive amounts okay to a, me it was a big man it was a double big mac why would you have a double why <laughs> no i think it was just a regular no i'm pretty sure it was a double big mac so but this was two days ago three days ago four days ago okay so now you're gonna go back to big tunnels fine wayne yeah it's called moderation we just talked about it alex <laughs> Well, moderation in doctors' eyes is like once a month with the fast food. I don't necessarily agree with them, but that's what they say. I used to go from – I used to think it was healthy because I lived in an area where they were all – like all of the chains were closed, so I mm -hmm. just would go to different ones every day and be like, well, that's got to be healthier than McDonald's every day. And do a Burger <laughs> King and Dairy Queen. And the justifications, remember? We the justifications. <laughs> but so – but I'm not a big health food guy, but I don't like dairy. I don't well, I like cheese, but I don't like milk. I call it milk now. I called it milk until I was 41. And then now that I'm 42, <laughs> I'm going to put an I and it's going to be milk. Now. Milk. milk. Bag milk. 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 Bag of milk. So <laughs> I remember one time you said you said that you have, you have a body like a bag of milk. I fucking lost so fucking hard. But I do. Remember when you said that though? That was. Yeah. And then I had to explain to you for 25 minutes what a bag of milk was. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. So my daughter, my daughter only, my daughter drinks milk in every once in a while, like chocolate milk. But she, why do I keep saying it like milk? Yeah, you're really milk. pronouncing it. I know because I've been saying it wrong for so long. However, today in her cereal, because our milk 
went bad. Uh-huh. Um, I gave her almond milk. It's a good way. <laughs> and she fucking loved it. That's she so great. It. Yeah, so we're so a, good. we're a milk-free, we're a milk-free house now. Milk is out of the That is the worst word in the world. <laughs> You know what you should do? You should get a decal of milk. It's pronounced decal. Thank you, Alec. God, for that. Thank you, God. Well, so- I have to give it to you. I have to give it to you. This is when we started our podcast. You guys can go back into the archives for that one. But he pronounces it decal, and I got it in a decal, but it is actually pronounced decal. Decal! Which pisses me off. Well, it's not pronounced metal. It's the... <laughs> but I, I, I get. I don't want to get into this stuff. That's not the moral. Oh, of the story but I'm laughing. This milk. is fun. We don't have milk anymore. We've said the word milk six hundred times in thirty-eight seconds. I'm gonna make sh- <laughs> men make sure you milk your prostate. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. So, uh, so now it's 2022, right? So that's great. Um, this is what I expect to happen in 2022. I expect millions of dollars. Uh, to come in to me, uh, however you want to put it in me, you can put it. You can put it in my bank. You can put it in my ass. You could stick it down my throat. You could fucking. I don't care how you do it. You can even dry rub it all over me. I don't give a fuck. You don't need lube. What are your plans? Uh, I, I I was I was. Uh, uh. <laughs> I love your face just, when I'm going on one of those fucking. T- <laughs> is you just? I just wanna. I just wanna <laughs> meditate more. I would just like to meditate. Oh, look more. at you, Mister Fucking! I'm so perfect with my meditation Zen bullshit. You wanna get? You wanna get fucked with millions of dollars? You wanna? You wanna yes. be treated like? What oh. was that movie? What was that movie where where it was like? Um, I don't know if it was Demi Moore. Demi is it Demi Moore? Demi I think it's Demi. Demi. Demi Moore. Demi Moore was a yeah. It's milk and more. Demi more. <laughs> Let's talk about milk, baby. Let's talk about dairy. Let's talk about all the weird things that it does to my pooping. Let's oh, talk about man. Milk. Talk about lactose. <laughs> lactose intolerant. And oh. How many people in 2022, when January the 2nd rolls around, are going to be like, oh, my God, I'm gluten intolerant. You're not. We're all gluten intolerant. <laughs> It's not good for you. Wait, wait, stop. But so what's with the gluten bullshit? Like, I've been eating gluten my entire life. I don't look for things that are non-gluten. Do I'm you? I'm gluten for punishment. <laughs> Awkward silence. So listen, what is gluten? Can someone please explain to me? I think it's a made up thing. Like like it's, the it's virus. The, it's the OU and the it's the OU and the flour. What? Right? What do you mean? Science. I'm I know a lot about science, Wayne. I'm confused. So am I. What is it? Like, okay, so all of a sudden, after two thousand years of eating foods, gluten's a problem. Why is it that no matter what comes out of your mouth right now, all I picture is you naked on a bed of a million dollars, just getting it jammed in every <laughs> orifice? And I don't like this feeling. That's the best thing you've ever said to me. That's it's the, the worst thing. That's the you've ever to said to me. I just feel like I just see like a like rolls of quarters just getting jammed. Wait, why does that have to be change? I don't want change. I want bills. You're not gonna. What are you gonna do? You're gonna roll up a bunch of bills and yeah. shove them up your ass? Yes. No, you can't do that. They won't go. Trust me. Wait, what? Um. Ah, <laughs> uh, so I I was hoping to. Yeah. What did you want to talk about? You have notes. I saw them. You can't hide them. Yeah, but but the next part of my note was um, (laughs) pleasuring yourself without porn and using your imagination. And it just doesn't fit into this part of the conversation right now. It doesn't. I think we kind of because we went to the we went to the million dollars in my asshole. You went to the million dollars in your asshole. (laughs) (laughs) Honey. Can you grab that certified check for a million dollars over there and roll it up and then shove it in my ass? (laughs) Just to find out that it was a fraudulent certified check. (laughs) 
I got fucked with a fraudulent certified check. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I'll tell you, man. So, again, so things are looking up here, too, for the uh, for the old show, the old Zen AF podcast. So, like I said, we mentioned at the beginning, we do have a new... Um, so, there's no more ZenAF.TV, which because... At first, Wayne and I were thinking about doing, you know, a content channel with more stuff, you know, and we kind of did it, but then we kind of backed down a little bit. And, you know, so now we're just we're just focusing on this for now. I'm all about the team here, mm -hmm. Alex, but you still haven't you still haven't said, you know what, Wayne, you were right. And I and I'm gonna. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! No, no, no whoa! You just mm -mm, no. Alex no. needed. Alex needed the dot TV. He needed the dot TV. Yes, Wayne, I'm gonna. It's not, it's I'm gonna not, say it. It's, yeah, it's, it's ZenAF dot TV. It yeah, has to have dot. I get it. I'm I'm admitting it. I'm totally admitting it. I'm totally admitting it. And that's when we were, you know, I was. Well, we both kind of were biting off more than we could chew at first. We both were doing that. But I was definitely the, the dot TV. I get it. I'm glad that that has changed. That's all I'm saying. What does your tailgate on your truck look like right now? <sighs> what do you mean, Wayne? You got a big dot TV decal. You got dot TV decals. No, I don't. I took it all off. off. Yeah, see? Alex I took it off. And it's... I, when we, when we do something, we're like all in. And that mm -hmm. was the problem with this, but there wasn't a problem with this podcast, but we wanted to do it all. Mm -hmm. We wanted to be, like you said, a content channel. We wanted to bring other podcasts on. We wanted to animate. We wanted to do this. We wanted to do that, which is, they're all wonderful things, mm -hmm. but it was too much. And, and we, we really just want to create a great listening experience for you. We really want people to be able to resonate and, go to one place to find us so we needed a big change and mm -hmm. we had a couple awakenings um over the last couple of days where you and i were chatting and we're looking at everything and we've started to look at numbers and where we're at and mm -hmm. looking at different strategies and you know what yeah w the biggest strategy for us is is to just focus on the podcast that's it so yep. that being said youtube we're going to keep trying to put it on YouTube, mm -hmm. but I don't know if it's going to stay on YouTube because that's not where people go to listen to podcasts. They yeah, so that's what we talked about. So we talked about the YouTube thing. So I, so again, to people who do watch on YouTube, we are going to try to do that. It's not over. We're going to try to do that. Um, we're going to see how that plays out. And so, you know, just, you know, putting it out there that if for some reason... You don't see 21, 22, well, whatever, the episodes on there. Go, just go download us, you know? I mean, I, I mean, let's be honest with you, people. When you have to watch, you know, Alex Starduster Moonside mm -hmm. and Arnie Finkelstein, um, which are characters we don't bring up right now, basically because, um, well, the Wild West was very unpredictable. And was unpredictable. Sometimes it was. Arnie, Arnie, and Arnie and Alex might be on. They might be working on a project. We don't know. We but, have no idea. Um, I don't. Don't even know why I brought those people up. I just looked over, saw Arnie Finkelstein on the sheet of paper, <laughs> and then started talking. Hi y'all. Oh, hi. What's up, Arnie Finkelstein? <laughs> you stud. How's Daisy? <laughs> we okay. So listen. I want everyone to love each other as I best as you sex, can. I had sex with uh, Alex Starduster Moonside, and his penis was shaped like a comet. What? <laughs> <laughs> it was shaped like a big comet, had a curve in it, and then like this big star thing on the end of it. <laughs> But the weird thing is that it wasn't shooting stars out the bottom. It was shooting stars out the top. <laughs> well, hey, I don't think that's a problem. I think that that's just the way it's supposed to be, especially if it's shaped like a comet, because that's mm -hmm. the big tip in the big hole. Cream side, cream duster. <laughs> He's cream duster moon side duster nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you do it, you sound like Leslie Jordan. I don't know who Leslie Jordan is. He's an actor. He's, he's, fantastic. he's yeah. He's he's a he's a funny funny little I'm guy. Not an actor. I could have been an actor. Everyone says that. You know, I could have been an actor. Well, could you? Could you? Have? 
You know what I find? You know what I find about actors? You wanna you wanna you wanna go there for a second? I find okay. all actors um, pretend at work. <laughs> well, you know what? You're not wrong. <laughs> they do. They do do that. They pretend. Um, they do do. They do do. They do do. So okay, let's talk about let's talk about relationships, Wayne. No. No, no, I'm not talking about those anymore. I give up on all relationships. They're done for me. The relationships are dead to me. I don't like the feeling of happiness, and I don't want to feel warm, and I don't want to feel held at night, and I don't want to feel like I have somebody to tell all my problems to because that's stupid. I would rather just keep it all up, building up inside of me, and then I could just let, let it, it out. out on my own. I don't want to talk about relationships. I just want to be in love. This is good. See, ladies and gentlemen, now we're getting to Wayne's inner demons his his we call them as we call them over here at dr alex relationship uh, priest You're fucking it all up and what sorry everybody i was acting there um that was good acting so that was good hard. voice acting that was good yeah. voice acting you know um relationships man i uh i am a 42 year old man mm-hmm <laughs> Okay, great. So now that we've got to the <laughs> so it's funny to me. So we were watching. My wife and I were watching this series the other night, uh, and this woman. It was a, it was a like a true crime series, and this woman was saying that she's been with her husband for like fifty six years, and I'm watching this, and she's talking about it, and I'm thinking to myself, has one of them ever stepped out of the relationship in fifty six years? Because it just seems like 56 years is a long time, is a long time, right? I mean, but then I look at like, okay, my wife and I have been together almost, almost 13 and we haven't as far as I know. Um, but, but 56 is another 40 or 34 years. That's a long, I mean, do, so do people, I don't know, but I do, but okay. So listen, we have a question, and this person wants to ask us a question. And Hang it's, on a sec. Yeah. My parents have been married for 54 years. Okay. That's a long time. That's insane. And it's... they haven't stepped outside of their marriage as far as I know. Yeah. But I think that it gets to it. My, my biggest, so this is, you want to get serious for a second? Do you want to know what my fear of being with somebody for 54 years is? This is where I get messed up in my head, and this is why I struggle with relationships, is what happens if they die before I do? you that said the same thing about a dog man. you said the same That's thing any, about getting a dog any, any any kind of relationship i've had this mentality my entire life that i want to die before anybody close to me dies. yeah but it's worth it see i am on the other side of it it's worth that love regardless of the pain and complete insanity af if if that person were to die or that dog or cat or parrot would to were to die first it's worth it because the connection is so there's nothing like it in 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 the human race there's nothing else like it i mean that you know uh, that's that's how i feel i mean it's worth i i i believe you um i just haven't felt it yet imagine this 42 years and uh, like i couldn't tell you a time where i was in love like absolute love not with my ex-wife not with never 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 ever never i've loved people ever Ever. My children. I'm in love yeah, with my children. Of course. But that's a different kind of yeah. love, right? Yeah. But yeah, no, I've always um I've always held that so far away from me because it's 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 self protection mode, but it's something that I'm working on and it's something that, that, that I'm that I'm working towards or whatever. But yeah, fifty fucking fifty some years. Yeah, that's that's a uh, that's a lot, man. So there so I do want to bring this up. There is an awesome question. It's actually an awesome question. And it made me kind of think so uh, the question is from uh fucking Rachel but it's Fuck a you Rachel I know no, hang on I get we it. haven't talked about I Rachel know. for a little I know. bit part of me part of me is really excited about that but now the other part of me now the reason I'm mad at Rachel now compared <laughs> to the way I was mad at Rachel before I was mad, mad at her. because where the fuck have you been Rachel yeah, you know, she sent us an email a few days ago, and I finally got around to reading it, and it's a great email, and she loves us, but but you're that's maddening. 
Like, where, where the, you don't just, you we put you on our podcast and then all of a sudden you leave for two weeks like it was holiday season and then now you're now you're just back as we're yeah. winding down. No, you have to be with us throughout. But I'm going to listen to your question, yeah. Rachel, mostly because it's the only question that we've probably gotten. Well, we haven't asked for questions. She just did this on her own. We have not put anything out asking for questions in quite a while. Oh, what is she? Now she's just all cocky? You yeah, now she's, she's like, oh, I can just ask a question anytime I want because I'm a uh, fucking Rachel. Here's the question. You're answering this first. What is the most embarrassing moment in your life? Sheer embarrassment. It's <laughs> a good question. I've got a, I've got a few super, imba- but I handle embarrassment differently than a lot of people, right? Because I'm very self-deprecating, so I can like kind of mm-hmm. navigate, but. Um, I've got I've got a few. Do we want? Do we, I'm going to give you the choice. Do you want like one when I was uh, like a, like a non-sexual embarrassing, or do you want a sexual embarrassing one? I want actually. I want sexual. No, sexual. I want non. Sexual. I want non-sexual. I do. I want non-sexual. I want non-sexual. I want something that was out. You, you were probably clothed or not, but not sexual. What is it, it's Wayne? It's just boring. It's just boring. But it's embarrassing. Know. The the what it, like what's the most All right, let's set the let's set the stage. It's the okay. year 2000. Mm-hmm. I was in the army. I was deployed to Bosnia Herzegovina for 6 months. Okay. God bless um, you. Doing some peacekeeping. You're welcome. Um mm-hmm. and I uh I, we had to get we were doing helicopter operations. Mm-hmm. So there's these helicopters called the Chinook helicopters. It's got the big two, like the big two rotors. Yeah, on yeah, yeah. Big ass ones. Mm-hmm. Well, when I was in the army, we I was in the artillery, and we had big cannons, and we would fly them from point A to point B. And in these helicopters, at the very front of them, there was a big hole in the floor, about five feet around, so they could watch the gun that we were hauling underneath the helicopter. Mm-hmm. And I loaded a British air force raf chinook helicopter and walked right down the center of it and fell through the hole in the floor and um like cut my leg pretty bad oh. because it was yeah and and the the british fall, he's like get the fuck on it come on and he hauled me in i was like ah in a whole world of pain and everybody's laughing at me long story short i got sorted out about two months later, we were um, in our in our at our camp. I was I was my camp was in Thomas Slavgrad. You're welcome. Thomas Slavgrad, and, God bless you. Thomas Slavgrad, <laughs> Bosnia, um, and we were all around the TV, and I was in my little sorry I was in my where I lived like where my bed was, and I hear Wayne get out here you got to see this. So I come running out, and they're all around the TV. And they're watching this movie on a VHS because it was still VHS stuff. And it had a big um, United States government logo on it because the United States military was there that day filming us. And it was they, they had a shot of us walking on the helicopter exterior. And then there was a a shot of my boots in the middle of the helicopter (laughs) on the ground while this thing was trying to take off. (laughs) At the end of the day, my sergeant, my sergeant, (laughs) this is back when we didn't have, like, when they could treat us like this, but they, my sergeant wiped a name off his first bullet in his pistol and he wrote Hannah on there. What? what? Yeah, it said if you ever screw up again, I'm going to shoot you. Oh my God. Jesus Christ. Ah. Ah. You should have asked for the sexual one. It was way better. But I think that one's. I'm visualizing this happening, knowing you now, and it's hilarious. It's yeah. hilarious. I mean, it's mm. hilarious. It was horrible. Uh. It was horrible. It was horrible. Uh, um, well, Alex, I, I will answer this. So, okay. Oh, so let me be, s- please be the story. I know. Please be the story. I know. Please be the story. I know. Please be the story. <laughs> I don't know if it is, uh, but this is one that I comes to my head for some reason. I don't know if I've told it on here or not. I don't even know. It has to do with the King of Queens. It's the story I know. Okay. So I, uh, now, uh, now again, I want to say this just so you all know, 
The embarrassment came the next morning, but I'll tell you what it was. I was, uh, it was after the show, we had filmed in front of a live audience. Um, the show had, was not over yet. I'm having cocktails with a, a man named Jerry Stiller, the most brilliant, beautiful man, funny as hell, wonderful human, rest in peace. And we're having a couple martinis in this room. I have to go to the bathroom and I'm a little buzzed. And I walk out of the stage door and there's a dumpster. And the dumpster is positioned outside of stage 28 on the Sony Studios lot. And I pull down my, I take my, my peen out and I start urinating all over the dumpster. While I'm doing that, the door to my left opens up and the audience members start filing out of the stage because the show's over and they see me peeing on a dumpster. And I could hear them going, wait, is that Mr. Prusan? Like, is he peeing on a dumpster? And then the door to my right opens up and it's basically the executive producer of the show. And he looks at me and he goes, just shakes his head and walks back in. I got, I was drinking that night. The next morning, I wake up to a text message from uh, an actor on the show. And he says, dude, you really, really messed up. Like you really messed up. And I was so mortified, so mortified. About two to three weeks later, they wrote me, they wrote the last episode that my character was in. So that is my most, I think, mortifying incident. And when it happened, I was, I didn't really care in that moment. And I wasn't completely drunk. I was just nice. I felt buzzed. But I was kind of cocky. I was only 25, I think, at the time. And I was kind of cocky and I was just kind of like, fuck it. But the next morning, I was so ashamed that I wanted to just crawl under like a fucking stone, you know? Um, so there you go. Did you ever make amends though? No, but I can tell you something. I can tell you this about two years after I was, uh, you know, written, my character was written off the King of Queens. Um, a friend of mine who's a, a writer, a very good writer wanted to do a spinoff of my character. So it was called Prusan and Prusan, which would have been a law firm, be set at a law firm. So I called, uh, Mike, uh, I'm not gonna say his name. I called the executive producer of that show and I pitched him the idea, right? To, to do a spinoff of my character. Again, it takes balls to do that, right? Yeah, man. And uh, he he thought it was funny, but he didn't think it would, it would uh, he didn't want to get into it. He, was, he had stopped being a showrunner at that point. I think he, yeah, he had stopped and he was older. But um, but they own the rights to the character, right? So I don't own. I didn't never own Prusan, Mister Prusan. Like they own it. CBS does. So you had to kind of go through them. But it did not. It did not work out. But I did not make amends. No, no. But I still talk to some of the people from the show and everything. You know, whatever it is, what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. I mean, yeah. you've you've had a successful career after that. So I mean, it can't be. It's not the end of you. No, no, it's you not. Know? And by the way, people like, have done a this. lot worse. Like what? I, like, look at this. Like, you're, you've got a podcast now. Did, yes, yes. I'm going to say yes. 